today we're putting headers on. So these are the old manifolds. Um, they don't match. The, the lower diameter on this one doesn't actually match the other one. I don't know what they're off of. I haven't pulled part numbers off of them. I think one's from a CTSV and one's from a Corvette. I think that's what's going on here. Um, but you can see I got all my CX Racing stuff on. So we got the remote mount uh, oil filter up here. Lines run down under the steering rack and then back into the pan there. There's the new pan. These are the new mounts. Um, I've got more comments on those mounts. I'll probably do a video on later. This is what the headers look like. Um, quite a bit different. I had them electro polished by a machinist friend. They send a lot of stainless out to get electro polished. So two things about that. CX Racing uses cheap O2 sensor bungs and cheap V bands as it turns out. So the O2 sensor bung was just zinc plated mild steel. So when they tried to electro polish it, it got crazy rusty and disgusting and the threads are gross now and it's gonna have to get retapped. The V bands were also zinc plated. Ground off the old V bands, threw them away and we welded some new clean V bands on there. I meant to buy stainless ones. I bought the cheapest ones on eBay. It turns out the band is stainless and the flanges are just zinc plated again. So those, uh, those might not hold up as well as I want, but they're at least new now. Um, I was going to go through and hand polish these um, to make them even more shiny, but I don't think it's really worth the time. Um, plus this, you know, it's the Z. I mean, look at this paint. Who cares? Uh, can I find the old V-bands? Yeah, so this is what they ended up looking like after the electro polish. Because these were just zinc plated, so it uh, corroded them. This is the mating surface. So they never would have sealed very well. Um, I was just gonna wire wheel them and just kind of go with it, but the CX Racing Kit doesn't come with the counterparts to these V-bands, meaning you can't make an exhaust with what they give you. So you would have to buy two V-band flanges and two V-band clamps. And when you, when you buy V-bands, it comes with two flanges and one clamp, so it just kind of made more sense just to buy new V-bands. Plus, these are male-female type, uh, meaning one of them has a you know an inset and then one of them has a lip so that they kind of seal a little bit better so maybe those will work out pretty nice we'll see how they leak if they leak um, thankfully six racing did include new manifold gaskets these were brand new but it looks like they weren't holding up too great looks like they were leaking pretty bad in some spots or maybe I didn't tighten them down very well who knows I'm not going to be able to reuse my old exhaust. My old exhaust was two and a half inch all the way back, um, just made out of scraps that I had. These are three inch, so I think I'm just going to go pick up some three inch straight pipe and run it back as far as I can, or maybe just get a couple of three inch 90s or 45s and just kind of dump it out the side right behind the front wheel. I don't know. I just kind of, you can't you can't run them open like this with an O2 sensor this close to the opening because fresh air will intrude in here and screw up your O2 readings and you'll you'll run crazy rich. So I, I at least need to get like a foot or something on there. Just maybe like a foot and then a downturn. As annoying and terrible to drive as that would be, that might be what I end up doing for now. Um, I would like to make another full exhaust um, or get one made. Got the first header on here. Um, no surprises, didn't want to go on. Down here, I know it's a wiring mess down here, but where it goes past the body, the body's up here next to this drain line, it was hitting kind of right where my fingers are. So I had to bash the hell out of it uh, with a mini sledge to get it actually to clear. Now, I know it's hard to see, you can kind of see there, there's about oh half inch to a quarter inch of clearance down there. This wire coming off the... Uh, uh, that's my ground wire. That's actually touching the exhaust now, so I'm gonna have to move that so it doesn't melt. All the wires coming off the starter are now very, very dangerously close to the exhaust, so that's all gonna have to get uh, tightened up and rerouted potentially. Um, biggest issue is that none of the plug wires are gonna work anymore. So this one is mashing on the exhaust. You can barely get it in there, so that'll melt. So right now we have an insane thunderstorm going on. Um, it's calmed down considerably, but it's still just like constant lightning and thunder. Um, knocked over my trash can. 
and my dog's hiding in the shower because he's freaked out. So anyway, headers are on. As you probably know, I already talked about this side. Uh, the dipstick is in fine. It, over here. So this header was even more of a bitch to get on than the other header. The good thing about this side is all the plug wires, the stock plug wires will actually fit on this side. No problemo. The steering column actually uh, had to be removed in order to get this header in on this side. So what you, what you do to do that is you loosen all of the bolts that uh, the clamps on the actual steering rack itself, loosen them. So that way you can kind of twist the steering rack. Then you loosen the two bolts that are on the U-joint down there. That's a little U-joint for the steering column. You loosen both of those, or take them actually, take both of them completely out, mainly just the lower one. And then you can rotate the steering rack down and pop the, the spline off of there. Make sure you notch it so you know which orientation it was in so that your steering wheel still looks straight. Jesus Christmas. Um. So more on these headers, let's go downstairs. Let me get my wheelie go around. All right, we're going downstairs. So, let's go to the back of the car, whoops. All right, so we got driver side, passenger side. Now you can see what I'm talking about with male-female headers, or male-female V-bands. Uh, so this is the passenger side. You can see this has an extra little lip. So number one, the V-band on this side was hitting the body, so I've pounded the body in quite a bit to get that to clear, so I can get my whole hand in there now. No clearance issues. This side, it's almost touching. I probably should have pounded it in before I did my final bolt down on the header, but this, this header on this side is much easier to get off, so I'm not super worried about it. So the main thing was... Oh, sorry. You're going to lose your orientation. So here's the V-band. We're moving up towards the engine bay. So right here... Uh, in here, the body was contacting the headers. So you'll notice there's a seam right here, this gross looking seam. So sheet metal on this side is factory Nissan. Sheet metal on this side is stuff that I had to patch in because the previous owner of this car is a moron and cut the transmission tunnel out. This was contacting pretty bad. I couldn't even bolt the header in. It was so bad. I got it in, figured out where it was roughly hitting, which was like all where my fingers are, all four of my all four of my fingers are touching where I was rubbing before. Took it out, bashed in like a mofo with a mini sledge. Now we got tons of clearance. I can't, you can see this part right here, I can't quite get my finger into. But with these semi-rigid motor mounts and this energy suspension transmission mount, it shouldn't be an issue. It shouldn't, it shouldn't flex enough to actually rub there. Um, this side was another story entirely. So look at this. I think it's actually touching. God damn it. So this is this is the transmission. This is the T56. This is the bell housing. This is the driver side header. This header, uh, I don't know which runner this is, but one of the runners was contacting the transmission, so I bashed it in. It looks like I didn't bash it in quite enough. It's still contacting, but I don't care enough to take it out again because I already reinstalled the steering rack or steering column. Uh, so we're going to leave that for now. I'm and then also, same story on this side, the body. So all this red stuff, red is Nissan. And then my sheet metal that I welded in is kind of back in here where you can't really see. It's where my fingernail's touching. So I, I had to dent this in to get it to clear. So if you buy these headers from CX Racing, they won't fit. They're for a Supra. I don't even know if they fit a Supra, but they're for a Mark III Supra. Um, but you can see the rack just barely, barely clears. It's not, it's, it's not very clear how tight that is, but that is freaking here. Uh, right there. That is freaking tight. They won't fit. You're going to have to bash your body in to get them to fit. You're going to have to bash one of the headers in, at least one of the headers in to get to fit. I'm sure, you know, if you bought a different batch, maybe you'd have to bash this header in here, this runner. Who knows? So the main thing here that pisses me off more than anything else is the fact that the two sensors aren't going to install. So look at this. Here's my fingers, the O2 sensor. My fingers touching the body. Can't can't line up with that O2 sensor bung. So let's go in. Look at that. It's not going to line up. So I'm going to have to cap this off. Probably weld it shut, or just use. I, I bought 
uh, oh no, it came with O2 sensor bungs or uh, block off, so that's nice at least. So I'll put those on there to block these bitches off, and then I'm gonna have to buy new bungs so that I can actually put freaking O2 sensors on this thing because I don't want to bash the body in anymore. And this is this is a corner. This isn't going anywhere. Over here, it's pretty much the same story. I could I could actually probably yeah I could actually get a sensor in on this side. Um, which if you were running a standalone, you could probably just get away with running one bank. 